Hello and welcome to this CAD Image PLM webinar where we're looking at the new tools in Solid Edge ST7. The topics for this session are looking at uh, the new functionality they have introduced, looking at some changes and enhancements to some of the existing tools, dialog box changes, all wrapped up using some practical examples to show you how the new tools and one or two existing functions work. So let's crack straight on. What is new? in Solid Edge ST7 sheet metal. First up is the transform to sheet metal tool. So in order to show how this works, we will take a practical example from this helicopter assembly. So if we just show the relevant part, we'll spin that around and we're gonna focus in on the back of this assembly. So there is a component on this side that we have, this sheet metal file, we need something similar on this side of the assembly as well. And to kick this process off, what I've done is I've modeled a solid lump that describes the area or the shape of that sheet metal file, but it's a part file. Okay. I've then exported it, not that I needed to, but I've exported it into a parasolid file. I just wanted to do some testing in ST6 to see how it worked and how it compared, but that wasn't absolutely necessary. So you can assume to all intents and purposes, this is a, is a part file and there would be a protrude and a cut and, and a few other bits and pieces, but not much. It's not a particularly complicated shape and I've deleted, as you've seen, some, some of the faces from the model because I overcomplicated it. It doesn't need to be quite as detailed as that. So, Before we go in and have a look at the new tool, let's have a look at what, as, uh, what's available in ST6 and before that. So in synchronous you have this thin part to sheet metal tool which in sd6 is available in the application drop down menu they've transferred it across into this tools menu how does that work then let's just have a quick look before we use it i will need to remove some faces from the model or at least run a, a thin wall operation so we've got the basic shape that will be necessary in order then to run this thin part to sheet metal so we can select a base face, this dialog box I would expect to see, we will need to separate some of the corners, tail solid edge, which, which faces on this model should not be connected together. You manually select this rip edges step, and click on the edges on the model that need to be separated in order to be able to create a flat pattern, this converted part to sheet metal file. So solid edge is then created for features, a base tab and some, uh, some flanges. And it's done quite a good job. Quid, it's done quite a good job of that. But it's it hasn't given me a huge amount of input in terms of what the corner conditions are like. I could always run retrospectively some standard modelling tools to modify those. And it hasn't. The other thing it hasn't really given me is is the ability to change the bend radius here. I can select it retrospectively. Can I change it? Uh, well, no, I can't. So that's not very helpful as well. If the bend radius there isn't what I wanted, how would I have got what I wanted? Well. And why is it giving it a value of one millimeter? Well, it's taken the standard solid edge sheet metal template, whichever one it is that you're using, and applied the standard settings to it. So the default out of the box bend radius for ISO sheet metal .psm is one millimeter. So it's assigned a one millimeter bend to that part file. Okay, so that's what solid edge will do right now and continue to do in ST7. Let's go ahead and open up that file again. Again, I will remove the excess detail because I just don't need it. I can always add in the flanges that go in as a separate step anyway. So that's the tool we've already looked at. The new command is a, an ordered only operation. So we'll need to toggle across into the ordered modeling environment. And there's the new tool, part to sheet metal. You can get Solid Edge to fire up this dialog box. There's a toggle at the bottom as to whether or not it does that. But the bend radius, default value, that's the default value I was talking about a second ago. I don't want that. I want a bend radius of five millimeters perhaps. I also want to be able to describe the distance between these faces when they get split. I can set a value to that. We can also define some corner conditions as well, some global corner conditions and global relief conditions as well. So we'll apply those uh, values to the model. And then in order to actually convert this into a sheet metal file, it's simply a case of selecting the edge on the model that you want to convert into a bend. 
The material thickness is there, it was two millimeters in the last example, we'll change it to the same. And also the, the external, or the, the volume that I created is the, is, the maximum, is the maximum size of this, so I want the thickness to be inside that volume. Then if I need to add additional features, flanges, etc., to the model, I can simply go ahead and select more of the bends on that, uh, on that part file, that volume, that extrude, that lump, and it will continue to add in uh, flanges. I have got more control than I had before. Every time you move your mouse over one of the corners, you can click on the icon that appears and we can go and override the default bend radius. You can also see that the corners, two bend corners, have a red sphere on them. That's interactive as well. <clears throat> I can select that and I can define what corner condition I want and the values that should be applied to that interactively. So as soon as I'm happy with my results, right click, right click again, and our convert to sheet metal operation has been achieved. If I need to go and edit any of the results, because this is an ordered feature, I can always go back into the I can always go back into the options page, select more edges, and convert more of that part file into sheet metal flanges. I'm happy with the results, perhaps. Um, so we could, at that stage, if I wanted to, this is going to be, uh, I want to continue to design in synchronous mode, so we'll move that whole feature across into the synchronous modeling environment, and it pretty much gives us the same results as we had before, just running the, the standard existing function. We'll add in those last couple of bits as well, so one of the thickness faces spacebar so we can add to that select set and then I can go ahead and grab the little flange icon tab across to the width field get the mouse pointing in the right direction so we can just finish off those uh, those those um, those flanges on top of the model so that's the transform to sheet metal tool a lot more interactive and it gives you a, a, a sort of a more realistic and more efficient workflow to, to generate that type of part that I've done there so it's, it's, it's probably easier for me to go ahead and, and model that area as a solid, as a lump solid, and then convert it into sheet metal than it might have been to have gone and created that from sheet, in, in sheet metal from scratch. So that's the, that's the, uh, the sort of function that they're, uh, they're, they're, they're giving the user, the option they're giving the user. So that's transform. On top of that, we've got some sketching tools, which um, we will perhaps touch on in another example um, shortly, but uh, I'm not gonna go into it in huge detail. There is a 3D measure and a whole, and, and improvements or changes to the whole dialog box as well. There are asterisks on those topics because they've been covered in a previous webinar. So the, uh, the last two, the 3D measure and whole dialog, they were covered in the last webinar we looked at the part environment in solid edge so just as a quick review of that that component that I've designed I would end up putting into this assembly that goes on the suspension part but there are some fasteners that it needs to attach to I haven't put any holes in that part so the practical example we show there is how would I use the new functions the the new measure tool and the new dialog box in whole to help achieve uh, or add in the holes to the bottom of this part. If you haven't seen it, how it works, and you're interested in seeing how 3D measure works, and then the options in whole in whole dialog box, then check out the ST7 part webinar we ran recently. So the other uh, another new tool in, in ST7 is this blank command. If we go back to our assembly I'll spin the model around and I want to show you is this part file here let's open that as a standalone part and in this case again it's just one of these lump solids so um, it's been created um, how's it been created can I actually I guess one of the questions might be well how could I model something like that in solid edge or will I need something else to go ahead and, and, and do that for me well um, so there aren't a huge number of clues here, but the, the short answer to that question is yes, you could do it in, ST, in, in Solid Edge. So actually it might be makes sense just to, to have a quick overview of how that might work. So we'll fire up a new part file, grab one of the sketching tools, we'll lock onto a plane, we'll draw a, a suitable sort of profile. This is a, a little bit of a look at some of the new sketching tools if you haven't already seen them. So you can see I've got dimensions, 
that are automatically attached to the sketch geometry as I draw and their active fields so I can type into them and toggle across between them as well so good user feedback on those new sketching tools so we'll start off with a basic tab the next thing to have a look at is well how can I create and can I create these, these there are two key features here really these side walls and then this this more complicated punch uh, in those side walls as well so how am I going to achieve that in solid edge well, that's uh, in order to get the side walls, I'm going to need to go into ordered. Contour flange will work well here. We can grab an edge on the model to define where our plane goes. And we'll then need just to draw the profile that I want to run around an edge on the model. And I guess the, the key factor here, really, the key uh, option is this um, is this chain setting. So we can pick it on, an, on an edge on the model and tell Solid Edge to take that contour flange and run it around those edges you may get. The, uh, this deform option as well or deform in uh, information box um, solid edge may uh, if you add multiple um, contour flanges like this then you're creating deform features um, the flatten tool may may or may not like that okay so that's part of the the model created in ordered how are we going to achieve that more complicated punch well this is where a couple of functions that have been introduced in ST5 and ST6 will help us. So we'll need to do some multi-body modeling here. So I'm gonna add a part. It's not a sheet metal file. Our initial body makes sense to call that sheet and this one tool. We'll click on OK. I wanna go into the synchronous part modeling tool. So we'll head back to synchronous, go to the home tab and I can utilize again a couple of the new functions they've added in ST7. There's a sphere and a box tool. You see on the keyboard to lock to the middle of that circular edge. So that's a kind of a rough shape actually. Can I just I might just expand some of these out? Maybe that'll do a little bit bigger. So we can then go back into ordered. What I want to be able to do maybe is just make sure this part body intersects the sheet metal body. So we'll we'll um, we'll manoeuvre that using the steering wheel. That should help us out intersects the bend something like that we'll just pull it back towards us a wee bit something like that will do and then in order how do I then get that kind of two intersecting bodies to form some sheet metal feature well that's where this new new in ST6 anyway emboss tool would help us target body is the sheet metal body tool body is the part body and so I'll let it go and, and run off and create that emboss feature so we could then Turn off the live section and get a decent idea. So that's, I mean, it's not identical to, but it's not a million miles away from this part file. So um, it uh, it seems likely that whoever designed this part uh, did it in uh, in uh, Solid Edge and then just saved it out and re-imported it. So we're having a look at the blank tool. We've digressed a little bit. So how does that blanking tool work? Well, it's uh, it's in the tools tab. The flatten command is available to us now, even though we're in the part environment. If I run the flatten tool, Solid Edge will fire up the material table if there's no material assigned to the model already. So we can apply that to the model. It then automatically kicks on and fires up the blank body command, and we can run that. What I'd like to do perhaps is just show how this works in this example that we open from the helicopter. So we'll go to tools, we'll go to the flatten command again. Material table is skipped because there's already a material in the file. This drop down list here is an identical one to the, to the one that you get when you're doing some meshing. I mean, if you don't if you're doing it if you've got access to these FEA tools in Solid Edge then when you come to mesh the the file you can describe a general setting that will apply more or less accuracy um, to the solid body uh, and that's what this drop down list here does so the lower you go in that list the higher the value the more accurate the results but the longer they take to generate happy to leave them on three we need to pick a tangent face chain as it says in the prompt bar right click preview uh, a solid edge will then run off and calculate what that file would look like in the flat and once it's done that, what it will also do is give us some surface area information, which we can copy to the keyboard, uh, copy to the clipboard, and it will also uh, give us 
I finish that to completely the overall blank size just like it does if you're creating a flat pattern in, uh, in sheet metal. Toggling back to the design model, simply select the synchronous header in Pathfinder. So that's how the how the blanking tool works. New function in part files and in sheet metal files. So there's a lot of there's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of compatibility between what they've done in in uh, in part and and sheet metal as well. And a lot of that again harks back to some earlier enhancements in ST5 and ST6 where they gave the users the ability to uh, to use sheet metal features in part files without having to do any transformations. The material table we saw briefly there, again they have made some significant changes to that. If you're interested in seeing what they've done, check out the ST7 part webinar we ran recently. Some good information in there. And also, in the ST7 user interface webinar, which I have mentioned already, there is the sheet metal sensor, which whilst not a new command, does uh, is now supported in 64-bit. So. Um, in the unlikely scenario where you're still running a 32-bit computer, uh, then you can still use that sheet metal sensor and have been able to for a while in, uh, in these latest versions. Pretty much, I think, since synchronous technology was released, the sheet metal sensor has always been a 32-bit application and hasn't worked if you have a 64-bit machine for however long you've had that machine. But there's a good little demonstration of how that sensor works if you're not sure what it does, or sensors in general do, uh, then check out the webinar. Pattern of Patterns is something else again across a kind of cross environment tool works in part and in um, in sheet metal. We'll run across into our helicopter again and we'll isolate the view of a, a couple of uh, a few of the uh, components in that assembly. Just uh, again going back to the blanky tool for a second if that if I sh if I went into this this is a part file if I went into it and maybe shelled it out and then ran the blank tool then I'd get an idea of what the the material what size material I'd need in order to go ahead and create the um, the cover for that seat I could then put that information into a drawing and uh, and nest it or do whatever it else it is that I need to do so again that's something that we can that we could achieve with that blank tool. That's not the example I want to show. I want to show pattern of patterns, and there's a component underneath this one which will help show that. So if we edit into that uh, that part file, again, it could be a sheet metal file. Doesn't have to be. In this case, it's a part file, but um, it probably makes more sense for that to be a sheet metal file. And we could always transfer it across. But I wanted to show the pattern of patterns. In order to achieve this, it makes sense for all of those circular cuts that are in the model already to be holes and then once they are holes we can go ahead and run a new tool which is this recognize hole patterns tool fence select or shift select all of the elements that are in the file I don't have to convert all of these into patterns and in fact I don't want all of them all the holes around the outside of the model not interested in those being uh, being patterns there I'm happy with to be for them to be as they are so if we toggle off uh, actually, we want to turn that one back on, but if I gradually uncheck some of these boxes, we can see we're just left with two patterns. This one here, which could be circular or rectangular, it makes sense for it to be circular, so it's already made the right call there, but it could be rectangular if we really wanted to override that, we could. And then you've got this, uh, this rectangular pattern as well. Uh, we'll click on OK, so it will then reduce the number of holes that are in here and add in some patterns instead. And we have a three by three pattern in there for the larger holes that go in this plate. The, the four holes that go around it are a circular pattern. So we could go ahead and change that parameter. Let's go ahead and make that six instead. I mean, you, you could you could you could you could use the steering wheel to do this, but it but it wouldn't give you quite as much control. It wouldn't be as quick to edit. And then there's a, another pattern of patterns. All of those holes that go around those circles we could very quickly go in and add them to all of the holes that go in that plate oh, I didn't it doesn't look like I accepted that change to six so it's gone back to four <coughs> didn't right click often enough there so that's how that, that but that's an overview of how that pattern of patterns or recognize whole patterns tool works now in part and sheet metal and that's a, a pretty decent look through what's available now in the latest version of um, Solid Edge in the sheet metal environment. So we've had a look at some of the new tools. You've got the blanking tool, 
pack tool that we just had a look at there. You've got transform to sheet metal. We've got some enhancements uh, to things like the measuring tools, whole tables, material tables. If you have got any suggestions about any future sessions you'd like to see uh, or any feedback on this one, please feel free to drop us a line. I hope you found this session of use. Thank you.